Saw a bad movie, huh? It's normal to be speechless. But I just want you to know, I'm here to help you. I've sat in that chair. So take your time. Ease into it. Ease into what? <laughs> Come on, Green Lantern. I know you can figure this one out. <laughs> this is a joke. <laughs> no, this is not a joke. This is movie night. Hello and welcome to Movie Night, the only review show filmed entirely without jump cuts. I'm your host, Jonathan Paula. Tonight we'll be taking a look at three comedies from the summer, all of which were recently released on home media. We'll begin tonight in chronological order with The Internship. Earning over $30 million in profit, this $58 million comedy film from director Sean Levy reunited the Wedding Crashers duo for more raunchy hijinks when it premiered on June 7th of 2013. This time around, Vince Vaughn and Owen Wilson are unemployed middle-aged salesmen who seek out redemption and an opportunity for a new job by competing in a series of bizarre games for an internship at Google. Playing in roles identical to every other movie they've ever done, Wilson is once again featured as the Southern Charmer with a crooked nose, alongside Vaughn as the fast-talking Hellraiser who brags about his own remarkable sales abilities, I could sell prosciutto to a rabbi. And I have. While this PG-13 rated picture often feels like a shameless advertorial for the giant multinational internet services corporation and its unique employee selection process, it does so with enough earnest enthusiasm and charm that I generally didn't mind. What if they take that photo and instantaneously put it out there on the line and they share it with their friends? That's Instagram. It already exists. It's one of the most popular apps in the world. Facebook bought them for like a billion dollars. That's billion with a B. Oh, no, no, no. Mine is very different than that. How is there something very different than that? Because on mine, you're taking the photo instantaneously. You're putting the photo out there on the line. Is it online? Yeah, I'm putting my photos out on the line, and I'm creating an exchange. Yeah, that's Instagram. But mine's more of a social sharing on the line that's happening. Online. Quick interjection. When you keep saying on the line, you do mean online. Stuart, don't do that. You don't do that to a man. He's got a million dollar idea right here. Billion dollar idea. Even better, let him flow. I can't help but reference The Onion's humorous take on the movie. The satirical news organization jokingly predicted this film was poised to be the biggest comedy of 2005. And that about summarizes my issues with this film in a nutshell. Nothing here is inherently bad, uninteresting, or even boring. It's just all so old and familiar, feeling like a piece of summer fluff from eight years ago. These two guys make an incredible pair on screen, able to effortlessly bounce off one another in many of the seemingly improvised scenes. But they feel like a couple of dads crashing their daughter's sleepover party, awkward and out of place. That said, some of the unsubtle jokes are still decently funny, and the characters are fun to root for. Speaking of which, the large cast features performances from Rose Byrne, Josh Brenner, John Goodman, Max Minghella, Asif Manvi, Rob Riggle, and a short cameo by Will Ferrell, who all do a redeemable job with the hackneyed and stale material, which includes frequent and irreverent references to the movie Flashdance for some reason. I almost never comment on a film's titles or credits, but the cast and crew are listed with a very inventive, internet-inspired sequence that is honestly the only impressive part about the entire movie, which is so predictable you could time a watch to it. The contemporary pop soundtrack, occasionally used as a punchline, is effective at moving along the slowly paced 119 minute film. Visually and thematically unchallenging, but still enjoyable for a few laughs, this might be worth a watch on home media, but I have little desire to see it again. The Internship, marginally satisfying if unashamedly trite. Now let's see what you had to say about this picture in the YouTube comments. Our scores now for the internship, a six and a five. Some of you were comfortable dismissing the obvious faults here, while still admitting that this film is anything but special. You thought it was good. Like a piece of stale bread, this movie will satisfy an empty stomach, it just wasn't all that appetizing. I thought it was all right. Our second film tonight is The Heat. Released on June 28th, 2013, this action comedy film from director Paul Feig was a massive hit over the summer, grossing $228 million against its $43 million budget. Sandra Bullock stars as a straight-edged FBI officer, opposite Hollywood's latest it girl, Melissa McCarthy, as a crude but effective local Boston cop who are tasked with taking down a generic drug lord. This duo is a perfect pairing, and their hilarious on-screen chemistry effectively marginalizes the inconsequential and lackluster R-rated plot. The 117-minute experience is formulaic, tired, and unoriginal, but it's the fantastic jokes and gags between the two leading ladies that makes everything work. Like when McCarthy attempts to give Bullock an undercover cop-style makeover, humorously remarking, My fear is I'm gonna put you in a bikini and you'll still look like a bank teller. The extremely vulgar McCarthy provides the majority of the laughs. 
as her less than subtle approach to interrogations often clashes with Bullock's more traditional thinking. I'm gonna kill you and everyone you know. Wow! Ah! God! Yeah, that's not what I fucking asked you, is it? Hey, straight here, take the gun out of this one's hand. Oh, now you want me to save your scrotum? When is the shipment coming in? I don't know. Ah! Hey, Stop. hey, all right, there's a shipment on Wednesday. Where? I, I don't know. I swear, I swear to God, I don't know. Tell her! I swear to Just God. Just tell her I don't know. Jesus Christ, don't shoot me in the dick. I don't know. It's going to be a Wednesday. That's four shots. Don't take any more shots. Don't shoot my dick off. I, no. Honest to God, I don't know where the shipment is. Don't shoot me in the dick. Hey! Hey! Stop it! The film's tunnel vision-like focus on this relationship isn't a surprise, though. When the picture was originally shopped around, it was simply named Untitled Female Buddy Cop Comedy. And indeed, it's the first female law enforcement movie in 25 years. Contributing some decent performances, the massive supporting cast includes familiar faces like Damian Bashir, Marlon Wayans, Michael Rappaport, Jane Curtin, Taram Killam, Michael McDonald, Tom Wilson, Tony Hale, and Nate Cordry, few of which are utilized beyond a single scene or two. Although I must say, it was a treat to see the veteran bully from Back to the Future in a major release again. Besides the movie running about 15 minutes too long, the visuals and music in this picture were far from noteworthy. I literally have nothing to say about them, positive or negative. This is a simple, believable, and predictable film, but Melissa and Sandra make you forget about all of that, resulting in a particularly fun time if you keep your expectations in check. Without spoiling much, the narrative's conclusion lends itself to a possible sequel. However, Bullock hasn't had much luck in that department, and is hesitant to return. That said, I honestly wouldn't mind seeing the loudmouth paired up alongside the Oscar winner again. The Heat, undeniably great humor between characters. Now let's read some of your reviews from the YouTube comments. Opinions were mixed on this one, but here's the final arbitrator of it all, the Raidomatic, with two sevens for The Heat. While some called it downright boring and others said it was the best of the year, praise was unanimous for the ladies' chemistry. Your ratings averaged to a cool. Despite some pacing and story issues, I too was enraptured by the picture's charismatic duo. I thought the film was cool as well. For the return of the weekly poll question, what is your favorite buddy cop comedy film? Lethal Weapon, 48 Hours, 21 Jump Street, Rush Hour? Leave your response as a comment below. Finally tonight, let's take a look at R.I.P.D. This ambitious 96-minute supernatural comedy film was unfortunately a box office disappointment following its July 19, 2013 release, earning back only 60% of its $130 million budget. There's good reason for that. Audiences were not easily swayed by the familiar premise, which seems shamelessly borrowed from Men in Black, nor were they convinced by the likable cast, which stars Jeff Bridges and Ryan Reynolds in the lead roles. Reynolds is a recently deceased Boston cop who is recruited into the titular department of undead officers who track down ghosts and spirits who refuse to vacate the mortal realm on Earth. Although many of the jokes seem like they're pulled straight out of a cancelled sitcom, Jeff is able to save many scenes with his scenery-chewing persona and stupendous comedic timing. His inflections alone made me laugh out loud more than once, and he is a chief reason why this film actually works. As for Reynolds, he's convincing enough to get by, especially considering the majority of his on-screen counterparts are computer-generated. The incredibly versatile Kevin Bacon is the primary antagonist, while the always beautiful Mary Louise Parker is relegated to delivering nothing but exposition. Based on the comic book by Peter M. Lenkov of the same name, it's a decently fascinating premise that allows for plenty of ridiculous and outlandish sequences, like when Bridges and Reynolds tackle a slippery one-armed dedo by jumping out of a 30-story building and resuming their arrest without a scratch, with the 19th century lawman remarking, you might have noticed, we're pretty durable. These quirkier fantasy elements don't, however, mix well with the more serious and typical police investigation plot. Shot on location in Boston, home of the 2013 World Series champion Red Sox, this film adeptly utilizes many local areas, like a brief appearance by former Nickelodeon Guts host Mike O'Malley as a Fenway Park scorekeeper, an escalator ride through the Heinz Convention Center, to the docks of the Fort Point Channel. Curiously though, the lengthy climax plays out in the drab and featureless financial district. While most of the special effects in the PG-13 rated film are convincing and original, there's still a few shots that look like they were plastered on at the last minute. 
The score by Christopher Beck isn't anything special either, sounding more like a royalty-free track from YouTube's audio library than the proper backdrop to a major motion picture. I will say, however, the cinematography completely blew me away. Director Robert Schwenke is to be commended for such an inventive and unique visual style that incorporates fast and dynamic camera moves, like quick snap zooms and CGI-assisted follow dollies, without ever disorienting the viewer. Although silly, formulaic, and generally unbelievable, this is a surprisingly fun and entertaining film that is thankfully well-paced, and one I wouldn't mind watching again. Sure, the gags are weak, the characters poorly defined, and the story is forgettable as last week's cafeteria offerings, but I still felt R.I.P.D. was an exciting fantasy carried by Bridges. Let's read some of your reviews now from the YouTube comments. R.I.P.D. score on the Raidomatic, a 3 and a 6. Almost all of you criticized the film for its similarities to Men in Black, but did cite Bridges as the picture's lone redeeming quality. You still thought it was lame. In an extremely rare occurrence, I scored this film three points higher than you did. Sure, it had more flaws than a rusted out Edsel, but honestly, I really enjoyed the whimsical, lighthearted approach to it all, especially Jeff's performance and the slick visuals. I thought it was good. And while we're on the topic of unpopular opinions, I'd like to promote a new playlist now available on the Movie Night Archive channel, which conveniently contains all of the reviews we've disagreed on the most. Click the link on screen or in the description below to watch some of our other controversial ratings. But finally tonight, let's take a look at what's currently playing in theaters by reading some of your tweet critiques. If you see a new movie in theaters, tweet your review with the JPMN hashtag to have it featured on the show. And be sure to follow me on Twitter or Facebook for updates between episodes and to help decide upcoming reviews. Next week, to commemorate the important date within its own film universe, we'll be reviewing the entire Back to the Future trilogy. I reviewed the 1985 original way back on Movie Night's second episode, but this program and my writing abilities have greatly improved since then, so I feel it's appropriate to take a more thorough look at the time travel classic and its equally enjoyable sequels all of which I absolutely adore. Since I know you've seen these films, please share your opinions by voting in the polls below or by leaving a comment review. Your contributions help make this show possible. And if I may ask just one more favor, check out the Movie Night Archive channel for exclusive trailer commentaries. This week I previewed the upcoming X-Men film and for an organized library of all our past reviews. Once again, my name is Jonathan Paula. Thank you for watching Movie Night. I hope to see you right back here for the next episode.